I think it's a theater company. That's what people think we are, but we're really a family. The love and the care here is like nowhere else. You really feel the arms coming around you, you know, like a hug, a big old hug coming around you. We have um, students running the lights and the sound, students doing instruments, and so it's all you feel like you're really being focused on, and it's not like the production, it's us. Here at Youth Performance Company, uh, we have a Young Artist Council, which is a leadership board. Um, they produce their own season, uh, they staff their shows, they finance their shows. Kids can sit and read about the civil rights movement or talk and read about bullying, but it's really different for them to see a story take place on stage. It's just so much more powerful and it really sticks with them for such a, a longer time and really prompts them to think about their own actions. We've made a commitment as an organization to do a story every year where young people are in a role of making a change. We did a whole trilogy of plays around the civil rights movement, all original work, all around uh, students standing up and doing something about what was going on. Uh, the first show was called Little Rock 1957, which was about the first high school that was integrated. Then we did a show called Freedom March, uh, and which was about the Mississippi Freedom uh, Summer. And then we did a show called The Day King Died, which is how people responded upon the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King. Sometimes the audiences are a bit taken aback, but you see that there's just a lot of processing going on, a lot of identification and hopefully a lot of victory and feeling that their story has been told or that they've been empowered to tell their story. I've been a bully before, I've been bullied, I've been a bystander and not say anything and I think now if I see someone getting bullied or someone saying something not nice, I say something. The Anam story is uh, about this Muslim girl who gets bullied for being a uh, Muslim. She wears a hijab and these two kids are just antagonizing her, pushing her around. Is that a dog sandwich? What? what? Is that a dog sandwich? No! <laughs> well, don't people from your country eat dogs? Do you even know what country I'm from? <laughs> like it matters. Uh, don't a lot of Somalian girls would come to the show, and there's this part where my bullies rip off my hijab, and it's so hard to hear them cry in the audience, but to see that they're so thankful for someone portraying that on stage, because no show has ever portrayed that kind of thing on stage. It's just so rewarding. It really turns into a really good discussion about what the cast feels and how the audience reacted to it. Uh, well, one time after we did the show, this Muslim girl came up to me and she gave me a hug. And she was just like, thank you so much for portraying this on stage because it really does happen. You can do theater that is meaningful, that has great intention that can be used as a tool to teach and to serve. And I think for many of our young artists that have been involved with projects like that, the long-term effect for them has been that you know they've made some choices in their own personal life to kind of carry that forward. Even as adults, some of our deepest hurts are connected to something that we experienced as a young person. And young people being able to engage in their own pain or injustice openly uh, really strengthens them, it allows healing to take place, and it empowers them then to, to move on. Portraying it is the first step on getting rid of it. We need to make an awareness that this does happen. And that even if you are just one, maybe by your stepping forward, another will step forward, and, and so on and so on, you know. And I think mean, we stand up for everything. <laughs>